Hey, hola, my friends. I'd like to go over some innovations that we made with a basic five-gallon bucket that would be used for um, outdoor or indoor hydroponic use. Once again, um, not once again, but um, we try to make sure that um, all of our buckets are food grade, heavy duty, BPA free. But basically, it's just standard size white bucket. It comes with the lid. In some cases, we'll use the lid. In some cases, we won't. Now, in, in basic um, hydroponic systems, be it do um, deep water culture, um, you'd have your net pot, and here you'd have your plant and your net pot. The roots would grow down. The solution would come up enough that it would touch about the bottom quarter inch of your net cup so that it would saturate whatever media you were using as a substrate therefore providing nutrients to the roots now sometimes um you can run an air stone in here but that takes air stone it takes line that also takes pump um you're really lucky and that also doesn't um an air stone doesn't provide really good circulation of the nutrient solution you have in here and although it seems as if those air pumps do provide a good source of oxygen they sort of do but it's not the best type of oxygen bubbles and these are all issues that we think about well I, I think about whenever I'm growing hydroponically or gardening period because there's a lot of ways we can apply simple science to this now a couple of innovations that we made and all of the parts that we use in this can easily be found in any local drug or hardware store check out these two red um, dimmers or water um, mister controllers that we have used up on top now, hopefully we'll find another way to use this, but once again, these pieces that we use, the uh, materials that we use can be found at any local hardware store. Now, these are used to take in oxygen from a modified pump um, that we have sitting over here. Now, I don't really want to go into details about the pump because I can't tell you about that much, but just to let you know, it is a 15 watt pump with a head speed of four feet. You don't need one that strong, but we're using one that strong for our experiment because um, I just think it looks really cool. Now, part of my career before I really got heavy into aquaponics or sustainable gardening was I worked at the Kit Peak National Observatory. Let's go Kit Peak, you get a chance to visit it. And I was fascinated by rocket technology. And when I say rocket technology, I mean rocket technology from beginning to end. Like from the rocket takes off to the blast radius left from the takeoff. And I always was fascinated by the blast radius. I said, what if we could apply that blast radius technology? Because you can actually see how far the blast goes out. And you know that it causes major, not only say major damage, but it contains major force, major power. And that's a residual effect of the rocket taking off. So in this case, the rocket taking off would be our pump. This line here runs directly into our modified pump. As that pump sucks in water, it also sucks in oxygen from here. You can actually see the transfer of oxygen from this line right here when it happens. It's kind of fascinating. Hopefully I'll be able to show you guys that as well. This line right here, and once again, this is um translucent blue line. Um, it's not absolutely algae proof, but it's pretty much algae resistant. I also don't have it pointing directly in a hot sun. Um, these are, three and a quarter inch connectors, elbows. Um, once again, three and a quarter inch um, elbows, three and a quarter inch grommets. And it's not like I'm trying to hide the science from anyone, but this is such a cool experiment. Imagine if you did this with your kids at home, how awesome this would be. So back to that rocket technology. You ever notice when a rocket's taken off, you'll see like the rockets fizz a little, you'll see it really bit happen, and then they inject that liquid, they inject it as um, sometimes the, well, the chemical based on fuel, they inject that into it, and then all of a sudden you see that rocket just light up, boom, when they take those latches off, for lack of a better term, you see that rocket take off, and it's absolutely amazing and fantastic. Now, our bucket won't take off with the root growth on the plant's will. Let me show you something. Now, we've taken a second and installed our pump down here, easily suctions onto the side. And we have our pump about a half an inch, no, about a quarter inch, or almost, or, yeah, about a quarter inch from the bottom of the tank. Because the water that we want this pump to take in, we want it to come from as low as possible. Now, our oxygen line that we have here, we're going to take a moment and we're going to connect it to the already prepared oxygen line outport that we have set up on the pump. Give me one second. Okay, there we go, now check it out. Our oxygen line is connected, our water line is connected, 
our water input line and distribution line um, is connected as well. And this sits about it once again an eighth of an inch or actually just barely touching the bottom of the bucket. In principle, this 10 watt, this 12 watt pump should be able to suck in enough water from the um, tank, suck in enough oxygen. And in order to be able to produce, produce a reasonable amount of bubble work and circulation already from where we have our, we have our output line at. In order, and that should be able enough to provide enough oxygen and disperse the nutrients that we have in there to feed the roots of any plant. Here's the key to our system now. We're using a sort of nano macro bubble technology. Um, it's Einstein's Brownian theory, and I just think it's fascinating. Look it up if you get a chance. But we are going to limit the size of the oxygen bubbles that are actually being taken into this system. And you can actually hear it and see it at work. You'll see the oxygen travel through this line here as we either raise or lower it through our two control nozzles there. And we're using two control nozzles because it is a 12 watt pump. If this was a 3.5 gallon system, I'd probably use my three or my four, or four watt pump. I'm working with Dr. James Letch and he's, we're trying to figure out a way to even break it down to maybe a one or two watt pump because we wanna make this as easy on the environment, as easy as your pocket on your pockets as possible. So give us a minute and we're gonna try to get this set up. Take it easy. The plant we'll be using for our experiment is our broccoli that's been out here. It'll be two weeks as of Sunday, I believe. And you can go back on our prior videos and you'll see the root growth on our broccolini, pardon me, broccolini. You can see where the old roots are and you can see where the new root growth is. It's pretty outstanding for almost two weeks. But this is run on a one pump system. And this was one of our earliest vers earlier versions of our entire hydroponic um, deep water culture watering system, growing system. So we've made quite a few advancements since this, since this time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this broccoli, broccolini, we're gonna transfer it over to our new system. I'll turn it on. We'll see how that goes. Give me a moment. All right, then, my friends. Now, this is the old bucket that our broccoli was sitting in, and I have it sitting in a temporary bucket right now. And this was a repurposed six-watt pump, six pump that we had laying around. I did the modifications to it, and it pulled its oxygen from a one-line single disbursement system, and... Um, our oxygen line, or the actual visible oxygen line, was much higher up on the rig. But like I said, parts of the motivation, parts of the uh, modifications that we made, I'll get into that in a second. But what we're going to do is I'm going to take this solution here. I'm not going to do anything to it because the broccoli loves it. I'm going to take this and I'm going to pour it into our new bucket, our much more modified and up-to-date system. And I'll show. I'll get right back to you after that. Give me a second. Okay, my friends, so we've transferred the solution from the old growth unit down here to our new upgraded one over here. So we take, I've taken the liberty to already plug the pump in, the water pump in, and I'm not sure if you can see it off the light, but you can already see that the pump has a current going, a circular motion current going in the um, bucket, and that's because of how we have the disbursement of the water set up with our outflowing pump down here. But back to our interesting thing, back to on um, these two um, oxygen control nozzles here. Now as I turn these up or turn these down, you should be able to see a change, exchange in oxygen flow um, as I do it. You should also be able to hear a difference. So it's super cool science when you watch it. Um, I have these turned all the way down with what I would like to think to be all the way down. But even like just think of like a rocket, like I said, when it's just sitting there and you can't control all of that energy, so something's just ready to. So it's time to blast off. Let's start adding some oxygen to the system. First, we'll see the exchange difference from this pipe down here. This is one line, and we're only going to go three clicks, which is not even a quarter of the way up. Let's see. All right, okay, we have a steadier rate, a steadier exchange of oxygen right there. Now we're going to initiate the second nozzle. Hear the difference, see the exchange, see the difference in the flow. Yeah, oxygen, the bubbles are so concentrated, they're actually flowing up through the middle in um, a reverse helix. 
Yeah, so the reverse helix motion is pretty, pretty cool, man. I think it's super awesome. And let me turn these down. So now we'll look at the water from the top. Now we just saw how still the water was a moment ago. So let's do the same thing. We're gonna go three clicks. Now it's a one. There you go. And we'll go to nozzle two. Here you go. Again, look at the disbursement of the oxygen. There are much more concentrated oxygen bubbles. And so what you may notice is that we don't have an air pump. We don't have, we do have an air line, but we don't have an air pump. We don't have an air stone. Our oxygen is much pure, much more concentrated than it would if you were to have either one of those things and we're still utilizing the power of the pump and it's totally in your control and you can see the science work while it's doing it. So for our final step, let's re that reach back here. Let's grab our broccoli, broccolini. Look at those beautiful roots again. Let's set her in her new home. And that's the entire process right there. You're gonna see a huge change in these roots by tomorrow. Um, I, if you want to go back in the video, take a pause and take a still picture of it. You'll see it for yourself. But I hope you guys tune in to the next episode. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Um, plant that first seed and together we'll grow, my friends. Peace and blessings.